Again, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our Sunday morning service here at Hegwish Baptist Church. Uh, you know, a lot of people expect deliverance people to just talk about demons and deliverance. And, you know, but the truth of the whole of these wonderful things that, that the Lord has blessed us with, remember, we forget how truly cool and awesome uh, deliverance, the ministry, that's not really a ministry, but, you know, you can call it that. Um, but for those that can cast out uh, evil spirits, the awesomeness is that it's something that wasn't done in the Old Testament. Father, it's really the only miracle uh, that has come now into our lives that wasn't replicated from the Old Testament. The raising of the dead, uh, all of these things that, you know, that bend they don't bend the laws of physics. They they create new laws of physics, so to speak, are things done by our Savior uh, and others, Father, uh, since Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins. Uh, this, this power, I give you power, authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And, and you've gifted us with that now, uh, Father. But in the Old Testament, there was no casting out of evil spirits. So it really is that cool, but... But we must remember also, Father, in Luke chapter 10, uh, that while Jesus said it's really cool that we can cast out evil spirits, what's better, what, what's paramount is that our names, that we're saved. Because it's really where it all starts. Uh, and uh, last service, I gave a pretty simple message on fruit and how to grow it, how to grow correct fruit. Uh, in our lives. It was just a primer uh, on what the Lord's going to be talking to us about probably for the, uh, I would, yeah, I can foresee maybe not just this service, but the next service. Uh, this one went a little bit different from how I thought it was going to go, uh, but still talking about fruit because uh, the fruit can be counterfeited um, and the basic essentials uh, that are gifted to us. We, we can't learn these. This is a truth uh, that is more caught uh, than taught. It's something that the Lord gifts us with. And, and these things all reside on the inside of us, by the way. You know, when we become born again, you know, there's the song, Fill My Cup. And it's a beautiful song. And, and the words are really neat. But truth be told, uh, our cups are always full. It's just the size of the cup that we're offering the Lord. Uh, in fact, Father, in Jesus' name, let our cups be sloshing over today, Father. Increase our feet uh, from under us, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand everything you have for us today. And Father, we want to learn. Father, the only thing that matters is, is your truth, Father. It's what leads and guides us by and through the Holy Spirit. Father, so we thank you for that. But again, Lord, as we prayed earlier, Lord, for all of us, deliver us during the service. Father, we command Satan to get behind us, every demon in Jesus' name. Father, help us to come out of agreement with your word. That's what your word says, Father, that if we will draw nigh unto you, you'll draw nigh unto us. If we submit ourselves unto you and then resist the devil, Father, he'll flee. Well, Lord, and of course, deliverance, you know, the cast out of evil spirits, Father, we know is a gift. Well, it's actually a miracle. Your word says they call it, your word calls it a miracle, Father. But but you gift us with that for these times, Lord, Lord, because again, you know how weak we are, Father. You know how deceived we can become. You know how back numbered and, and and Father, who would have ever thunk after all these years, Father? Here we are, two thousand years, uh, Father, after the resurrection, and, and how the power of God, Father, how you again, God. You know, brothers and sisters, you know, a lot of cultures, you know, people will name their, their children Jesus, you know, Jesus, whatever. Um, but I'm not familiar with, now I'm sure there's somebody out there, but they've probably, they probably named themselves that. I remember uh, reading that somebody named, went, went to court or went, because you can change your name legally uh, for just a few bucks, um, but they changed their name to God. Uh, but I'm sure their parents didn't give them that name. Because when the name God comes up for me, it, it's like everything stops. It's, and it just, and it should, you know, when, of course, you know, when the name of Jesus comes up, you know, everybody's quiet and, 
And uh, but because our father is is the whole, uh, you know, we have Jesus Christ in our lives now as our savior, who who is now a platform, the ladder, the bridge that gets us back to God because sin separated us uh, from God. I'm going to talk about that. And I kind of interrupted the prayer, but uh, Father, Lord, help us to come out of the out of service. Lord, help us to be in agreement, Father. Re resist the devil, Father, so he'll flee out of our lives. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. It's going to be over in the, in the comforting bedtime story. Uh, from the book of James uh, here for the service uh, today. And you're thinking, I thought you were going to talk about fruit. There's no fruit in James. Well, there is. In fact, we're going to find out what the first part of the fruit needs to be. You know, we all want the juicy stuff there. You know, everybody wants no matter what brand of apple. I, you know, I like Fuji. <laughs> you know, I mean, it crunches that even the house shakes. You know, when you crunch it and the, and the flavor, you know, some people like Granny Smith and, and you know, some of these other ones. Um, I, I'm one of those, you know, Fuji uh, type apples. But, you know, there's nothing better than a banana at whatever state you like it in. You know, oranges, you know, today, you know, they've done so much with uh, with those easy peels, uh, cuties, they call them. And um, just so delectable, just, you know. God has God has been so awesome uh, in His creation, but you know we have all those things. But we need to make sure that we don't have flies flying around our fruit. You know, you let fruit sit uh, a little bit longer, or uh, if you bite it, you don't partake of it. Uh, it starts to rot. It starts to putrefy. Uh, and this is what happens a lot of times in our lives uh, with the really neat fruits that are out there, and that's because we have to get past the first fruit. In fact, it's a very interesting word, first fruits. Uh, it's mentioned several times in the word of God. So uh, as you're turning to James uh, chapter one, uh, Oswald Chambers wrote, he says, some of us are trying to offer up spiritual sacrifices to God before we have sacrificed the natural or maybe even the carnal. The only way we can offer a spiritual sacrifice to God is to, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, present our bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy, acceptable unto God. Not what we're offering God a lot of times. You know, you've heard the joke, and it's just such a good joke to repeat time and time again, because almost everybody, okay, no letters, no texts, okay, uh, almost everybody likes apple pie, you know. It's supposed to be Americanism and, and apple pie, so to speak. You know, and so if you and I like apple pie, you know, well, we then God must like apple pies, and we're just sending apple pies to God our whole life. And when we when we get home uh, to be with our Savior, and we're standing before God, we're all standing there, all nice and straightened up, and say, "God, what do you think of those apple pies?" And God says, "I don't like apple; I like cherry." And that's where we miss it so often in Christianity, is that we're offering things unto the Lord uh, that really we're not qualified to do. You know, we, we, we've we stolen something, uh, or we borrowed it illegally, uh, nicely said. Uh, and the Lord can't bless those things. So uh, again, Chambers was saying we need to offer uh, our bodies a living sacrifice. He says, sanctification means more than just being freed from sin. It means the deliberate commitment of ourselves to the Lord for our salvation and being willing to pay whatever it may cost us. If we do not sacrifice the natural or the carnal, you know, he says natural, but he's really talking about the carnal. So if, if we do not sacrifice the carnal to the spiritual. The carnal will resist and defy the life that God has given us, the life of Jesus in our lives, and we will, pro we will produce continual turmoil in our lives. 
This is always the result of an undisciplined spiritual nature. We go wrong because we stubbornly refuse to discipline ourselves physically, morally, mentally, and I'm just going to add through deliverance, through through the casting out of evil spirits, through spiritual warfare in our lives. He goes on to write, he says, we excuse ourselves by saying that we weren't taught that way. And again, that really bothers me because over the years and just recently, you know, I've heard of people who say, well, I'm this way because of where I live. I'm this way because this is the way my culture raises us. And, Ch and uh, um, Chambers uh, says that uh, we excuse ourselves by saying, well, I, I wasn't taught uh, to recognize this when I was a child. So he writes, he says, well, so then discipline yourself now, today. If we don't, we will ruin our entire, our entire personal walk uh, with the Lord. Very touching. And he closes with this. God is not uh, actively involved with our natural life as long as we continue to pamper and gratify it. Lord, help us all. You've heard me saying, I have too much TV in my life. You know, I have cut out so much of the garbage, the pollution. But, I, you know, I like I like those, uh, some of the reality. <laughs> Jerry calls them my stupid shows, the, the stupid people. Now, of course, uh, they're not saved, or if they are, Lord help them. Uh, but, you know, I like a lot of the cop shows and, and you know, uh, but not, I don't like I don't I don't like the racy, dirty stuff. I'm not interested in seeing flesh. Uh, I don't like any of that stuff. Thank you, Lord. That's I wish I could tell you. Oh, you know, I'm just such a good Christian. I don't want to see that. No, my flesh loves that stuff. Uh, but the spirit inside of me, the Jesus that lives on the inside of me, doesn't like that stuff. And I I do. Uh, you know, I just don't turn it on anymore. And when it when it's on or what, I turn my head. You know, but I still have this problem with with too much tv and too much food by the way you know so you know those are some of my some of my vices and these are things that need to be surrendered to the lord because again like chamber said god is not actively involved with our natural life because we want oh lord deliver me lord heal me lord take this away from me these carnal things that so many of us are struggling with uh, as long as we continue to pamper pamper them or gratify them, Lord, Father, in Jesus' name, we rebuke that right now in our lives. Father, we command these demons, Father, that are tricking us, these demons that are that are causing us to be weak, these demons that are deceiving us. We bind you to our authority in Jesus' name. We cast you down. We strip you of your power. We don't want you in our lives. We come out of agreement with you, and we command you to come out of us right now in Jesus' name. Loose us all. Let us go in Jesus' name. Every demon that is driving us in the carnal, uh, and and brothers and sisters, just just as just as God's word teaches, uh, um, trying to pull the address out of my head. Uh, who was it? Was it yeah, Paul? It was Paul. With was it the Galatians? You know, you you because you started in the spirit, you're going to end up in the flesh. See, we start in the spirit with being born again. So, Father, help us, Lord. The demons are a really big problem in our lives, Father, but there's, Lord, there's one problem larger, ginormously larger than the demons, Father, and help us through uh, the service today, Father, to come out of agreement with that uh, in Jesus' name. So uh, James chapter 1, uh, verse 1, I love, again, my, my nice little bedtime story, James, a servant of God. Uh, and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. Now, since we're grafted in, you know, this was written more to Jews. And, and got to remember, and, and Hagwish, I know, I know you're already thinking, is he going to, is he going to say that? He's going to say that I am, but <laughs> so you can, mute, you can mute me for just a second. Uh, but can you imagine, you know, because according to the word of God, uh, Mary after Jesus had had six children, um, and four of them are named in Scripture. Uh, so can you imagine? And Jesus, of course, was was the eldest one, and and uh, can you imagine? You know, living in that home, and you know, mom just looking, looking at the other kids, and can't can't you be more, 
more like your older brother and and wink wink okay you knew i was going to say that uh, but the truth of this is that uh, james was the next oldest from what they whoever they are uh, they say um, and james was very much involved in things of his older brother uh, after the resurrection in fact again tradition whoever tradition is uh, thinks that uh, the book of James was the first book written uh, after. And of course, the thing that, you know, again, in the natural makes sense for me with that is that what better person to know, you know, because he grew up with Jesus in the house uh, of all things, you know, and there's nobody that, that knows us better than our families a lot of times. Uh, and so they say James was the first one. Uh, and they also say that uh, he died, he was martyred shortly after uh, this book. So, wow, knowing the things that he knew. Thank you, Lord. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Hello. So, hey, everybody. Uh, greetings to you. My brethren. Oh, he's talking about us. What's it? My brethren. Count it all joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. When we fall into divers' temptations, <laughs> we can laugh at that, but, you know, let, let me read on to the next verse and then come back and we'll pick this up. Uh, so, count it all joy. Find your happiness. You know, find a way to sit back and go, thank you, Lord, is what it says uh, in the Greek. When you fall... And, you know, it doesn't say when you step into it, you know, it boom, you fall into it. All these all these different uh, adversities that are going on, knowing this. Now, we don't know this, but Father, in Jesus name, we all here today want to know this. Because, brethren, when James is writing, knowing this, he's talking about that he knows this. And he's hoping that this will transfer to us knowing this that the trying of our faith works patience. Wow. If there was ever uh, an attribute, a godly attribute that all of us need to have in our lives, it's patience. Uh, we all need it no matter how much, because once we can get in front of patience, once we can get somehow an advantage uh, over patience, a lot of things that the devil throws at us, it's not going to be ho-hum, but it's going to be, okay, I know the Lord's going to take care of this. I know that I'm going to be okay. That's a huge jump for us in our faith. In fact, once again, that word paramount, look it up. It's paramount that we have some amount of patience that is abounding. You know, we all have these things in us. I, I mentioned at the very beginning, or I think I mentioned, I start, started to mention about that, you know, when we become born again, when the Holy Spirit comes inside of us to save us, okay, uh, he, he saves our spirit, the flesh, you know, and everything, all, the soul, that's all going back to the ground. But the spirit is what is saved. And then we're left in the flesh and told to fight it out, you know, work out those things learn how to pray, learn how to defeat, learn how to trust the Lord, learn how to have patience. And all these things are in us. Now, again, in, in my mind's eye, when I say, Lord, loose into us, you know, I always have this looking up to heaven, but th they're already here without, with, you know, and, and again, this is where, this is where these new age liars come in, telling us, teaching, teaching the ungodly, teaching those that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, how to look on the inside and, and you know, that's where you're going to find all this stuff. And see, it's just a counterfeit. It's just, it's just another lie of the truth. It's like comedy. What makes comedy, what, what makes uh, comedy work is the measure of truth that's in it. Well, what makes a lie work also is the measure of truth or deception the devil can insert in it. Because then we, you know, a lot of people, yeah, you know, we have this on the inside. We're all born with this. We have this on the inside of us. But that's coming from a carnal or a natural standpoint. It's never going to work. So for us, 
these spiritual gifts, these spiritual attributes are all, the kingdom of God resides on the inside of every single one of us. It's there. It's waiting for us to pick it up and go, oh, what's this? You know, we can't even recognize it. You know, wow, this is coming from, from the treasure of things in my life. What, what could it possibly be? You know, blow the dust off, you know, wipe it off, do something. Patience. It's always been there, brothers and sisters. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, patience, goodness, temperance, meekness. These gifts are already on the inside of us. And so because of church, because of pulpits, because of, of cemeteries, I mean, seminaries, because of Bible colleges, because of all these things, where, where this myriad of, Christ, of Christian dumb, D-U-M-B, uh, is being taught, the devil is just so easy to slip in and sow these seeds of counterfeit in our lives of Christianity. And I'm going to get to the counterfeit of the fruit, but not, not for this service here today. So he says, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into different types of temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. And many people say, well, this is the devil, you know, he just is, he's just all this temptation. Well, it is in one sense, but you know, these demons and the devil himself, he just can't come into our lives and go, boo, you know, here I am. Oh, you know, he, he, he can, but he has to do that from the outside. You know, there has to be a reason why God doesn't just allow demons to, to overrun us. They're, they're either already there. We've learned them. We've learned the sin. We've had the sin transferred. Sin, sin, demon into our lives, you know, that it's already there. But, you know, again, from the outside, demons just can't jump on an individual. I'm talking about a born again uh, individual. The Lord just doesn't allow that. You know, he's there. Who knows how many things the Lord has saved us and protected us from. So he says, knowing this, that when we have these different trials, these different temptations, they are from God. Now, yes, God uses the devil, and we can recognize where they're coming. You know, it's, oh, the devil's after me. But so is God. Our Heavenly Father, your parent, your Heavenly Father, God, man, he wants the best for you. You know, not, 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 not what Osteen and these other fools are talking about, but the best is more of Jesus, more of his son, because Jesus is the one that went and died for our sins sins, fruit, first fruits. Let's move on. So he says, but let this patience, this, this quality, that this is, this is, this is an attribute. This is, this is, this is a hunk of gold. You know, if somebody were to come up and give, give you a, you know, a two and a half pound, you know, a kilo of gold, poof, put it in your hand with, you know, we'd be like, Oh, you know, how heavy, you know, it would be. But we'd be like, wow! Well, brothers and sisters, patience is a kilo of spiritual gold for every single one of us because it's an attribute from the Holy Spirit that's going to... It, and patience comes especially with, dis, with discretion, okay? The gift of discretion, uh, you know, patience... I mean, patience can come with these, you know, we pray often, Father, right now for all of us, Lord, bless us. Loosen to us, perfect in us. Lord, help us to dust off, blow the dust, Father. Father, we pray that, that these things we're asking right now, Father, would be in us abounding, because they're already in us, but they would be abounding, Father. And that is wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion. And this patience, a lot of times, most times, works through discretion, because Patience, again, it's just a little variance because what discretion is, is, is the gift from the Holy Spirit that tells us when we can go forward and when we can't go forward, when we should go forward, when we shouldn't. Because what happens is, you know, we've, we've heard a message from somebody. We've read something in the Word of God. The Lord has blessed us. You know, have you ever met somebody? I, we had somebody one time at HBC. Uh, he's not around anymore. Uh, good guy. Let, let me take that back. 
he probably has potential being a good guy. Okay. Um, but this guy, when every time the Lord convicted him of something, he wanted everybody in the church to be convicted. And he went around, you know, because God was doing something in his life. He wanted to make sure, you know, like Peter, you know, when, when Jesus told Peter how you're going to die. Well, how about John? How about these other guys? How, how are they going to die? You know, and Peter and Jesus said, well, Jesus held his feet to the fire. He says, he says, will you follow me? Don't worry about them. See, we worry about other people and, well, what's this happening with other people? But, but listen, none of us are getting to heaven with uh, off of our spouse's coattails uh, off of our pastor's coattails mine are really short don't even hold you can barely grab on mine you know we're not going to get to heaven on anybody else's coattails except jesus he, he's he's the only star of the show here so to speak to the, the, the you know the, the shining one you know there's a false shining out there and that that's lucifer you know uh and uh and then the illuminists you know that follow him uh, but, you know, just false Christs, uh, fall, you know, antichrist, so to speak, uh, all for another message. Uh, so he says, let patience have, and again, for, as a man, you know, when, you know, you, you ladies already know this. Um, we guys, never mind. Uh, but when it says, but let patience have her perfect work, there must be something beautiful about this, you know. Again, putting aside today's gender confusion and weirdos uh, that are out there, um, you know, you don't say, that's a beautiful man. Ugh, what does that mean? You know, uh, you know, you hear the word handsome or something, but, you know, or, or good, but beautiful beauty is just naturally, naturally, it, it, it connotates a, a, a lady. Uh, and so he says, so let patience have her perfect work so that we may be mature and and filled. You know, every day is a smorgasbord with the Lord. We can stuff ourselves with everything that the Lord has prepared our table with. And so he says, you know, let so uh, so we can have this mature work so that we may be, I'm, I'm sorry, so we may be mature, entiring, entire, wanting in the he in the Greek, lacking, so that we're not lacking anything. And none of us, brothers and sisters, truth be told, are lacking anything. We've been given a name that's above every name, above the name of cancer. Father, we rebuke the spirit of cancer that is working in our life, Father. Uh, and Lord, again, I don't have time, but how that starts and, and is able to grab us physically, we rebuke that right now in Jesus' name. And for our, for anybody else, Father, that we know that is battling that C word, Father, we know Steve uh, from the from the Charlie Channel. Uh, he uh, he's battling cancer and, and others. Father, we just rebuke cancer right now because you've given us a name above every name, Father, and that name is Jesus Christ. And every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Father, we just ask that good work that you started in us, you're going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we're more than conquerors. We, we've got it already. We, we, there's There's nothing else to win here. There's nothing else that's not already residing on the inside of us that we just need to recognize and, and say, Hey Lord, I, I'd like this in my life. And then the Holy Spirit's going to say, well, okay, how are your first, how are you, how are you doing with your first fruits? Hamna, 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 hamna. Wow. What are my first fruits? Well, let's, let's read on. So it says, if any man lacks wisdom, I, I'm not talking to us, uh, let him ask of God that gives to all of us, uh, uh, bountifully, liberally, kind of a nasty word uh, in our uh, in our 21st century vocabulary, but uh, liberally, bountifully, uh, and it upbraideth, it upbraideth not. It doesn't. God doesn't hold back. The Holy Spirit doesn't hold back, and it shall be given him. Let he that lacks wisdom, Father, for all of us, Lord, we all lack wisdom. Truth be told. But brothers and sisters, just wait. Just because we're praying for wisdom, don't expect rockets, red glare, and bombs bursting in the air to happen in front of you. Now, if they do, praise the Lord. But if not, just be patient, and it will come. 
And if we allow patience to have its her perfect work in our life, when we need that wisdom, you know, God's going to say, poof, here you go. And, and so many times, brothers and sisters, what happens is remember you know there's a situation something comes up and the lord said and the lord just poof he takes care of the problem and we look back you know we're like wow or you were in it all the time and the lord and the lord the holy spirit will remind us you know that the blessing we missed because we didn't pray about it that we weren't involved in what the lord was he was going to do it anyway no matter what we were going to do but but the blessing we missed uh, because we were doing something different we were in the natural, maybe. Uh, and so he says, let, so, um, you know, the Lord gives a bount, bount, uh, bountifully, uh, doesn't hold back. It's going to be given to us that ask. If I were asking, Lord, we need help. Well, you know we need help. Lord, I don't, help us to know that we need help. Verse 6, but let him ask in faith. That yeah, came up earlier in the test, in the uh, in the uh, yeah, in the testimonies, brothers and sisters, faith comes on hearing, hearing by the word of God. There's just something about putting our nose in the word of God. Well, I hear the word of God here, there, and there. Yeah, but if you don't have faith and you're here and you listen to this person's message and that person's message, you know, and you follow this blog, whatever a blog is, you know, and, and you follow this, that, and the other thing, and you're lacking something in your life. And these people are teaching it. It's because God's not giving it to you through that. God will always speak to us about us through his word. It's just imperative that we pick up the word of God. <laughs> what a camera. We pick up the word of God and, and we read it and, and, and we feast from it. it it's, it's part of our daily bread. Uh, so let them, let them ask in faith. Faith, nothing wavering, because he that wavereth is like the wave of a sea driven with the wind and tossed about. And the demons are tossing and whoosh, look how big and bad I am. Oh, oh, you know, when actually you ought to be shut up. Get behind me right now, Jesus. I bind you. I rebuke you. I cast down. I refuse to allow you to work in my life. And then the problem is that we're so weak, you know, so they're on the outside because when we pray, it works. And they're on the outside. Uh, and, and the demons are like, oh, I'm on the inside doing all this and that when when they're still on the outside. But it says, for let not any of us think that we will receive anything from the Lord. Well, gosh, James, couldn't you word this a little, nice, a little nicer? So when we lack faith and we waver, we're like, a, we're like the wave of a sea. Just, you know, you've seen it. Just, wow, a massive, just can't even be explained how the waves of the sea are. He says, so don't let anybody, don't let any of us think that we're going to receive anything from the Lord when we're like that. Well, Father, Lord, help us, because we have way too much of that in our lives. Let the brother, oh, I'm sorry, verse 8. I wanted to skip verse 8, but again, you know, the niceness of James. Jesus' brother. He's got to be as sweet as Jesus. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Somebody that is that is unstable. This is why the Lord restores our souls. And this is why, and, and it's, how easy is it? Is there a formula? Do you have to throw money at me? I'd love to tell you yes, but no. All this stuff is freely given unto us that ask our father, there's not a father anywhere. I'm sorry, putting aside the 10% of, of the idiots that are out there that shouldn't be called fathers, uh, putting putting those people aside. What does the word of God say? When his son goes to his father and said, Lord, I, father, I need some bread to eat. And we give him a stone. Is that what, is that what you do, dad? We can make mistakes, but is that what we do? No, of course it's not. When we go to our Heavenly Father and, and say, I need help, our faith comes in, and these are things, but listen, I'm, I'm getting to it. I know I'm not, I know I'm, I'm not going to get to where I wanted to uh, in this, but I am going to get to the point of what this message uh, is all about, tying all this stuff uh, together. 
So it says, let the brother of low degree, and you know what? That's us. Now, we're not always low degree. Sometimes we're on the mountain, okay? But when, when we're down in the valley of the shadow of death, we kind of feel like we're in the low degree. Now, we're not, but we feel like that, you know, the, the darkness and, you know, you know, study the valley of the shadow of death. It, you know, we're in this valley where the sides that are so evil and dark and scary and, and around us are so close. You know, just freak us out if we could see how close they are. But even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we don't have to fear anything. We don't have to worry about anything. Because our, the Lord Jesus Christ loves us. He's going to take us through this. It's what the word of God says. It's not just a cute saying. It's something that we can take a bite of. You know, my food jam will snap. You know, man, you take a bite of that in a room, people are like, what's that? You know, you can tell when, when people are different fruit, you open it up. Somebody's like, wow, man. I mean, people's heads turn. Speaking of fruit. But he says, so he says, uh, that uh, so let the brother of low degree rejoice. It's okay to have a problem, just as we heard today of the problem of the person who said they're bitter, and but at least they recognize it. And and, and brothers and sisters, we a lot of times recognize our problems, but we what we really need to recognize is once we get to that fifty point one percent, you know, of that problem is that Jesus Christ will help us with that, and that's where we need to exercise. Our faith and, and, you know, the the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Again, just try to get our minds, you know, and that's why we need a spiritual mind, the mind of Jesus in our lives, because how do we get, how do we grab? It's like grabbing the air when we have a carnal mind, because there's just nothing. It's, you know, uh, it's like the old cotton candy. Well, you know, it's, ooh, how big it is. And we, we go to bite it and, you know, and there's just nothing there. So he says, so he says, but the rich, uh, let, let, let me, let's put this in the context. Uh, you know, a double-minded man is unstable in, in all their ways. So let the brother of low degree rejoice. Let, let, you don't think you're anything. You're everything. You, you, you know, you but you don't we don't get to that until we take that first beatitude that we can be nothing we can do nothing because we are nothing because the second we think we're something oh i'm so gifted oh i got the gift of gab i got this that and the other we're already deceived the lord's not using us he's already the holy spirit has stepped aside so let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted we are exalted our heavenly father loves us but the rich the opposite they're made low we, we think, oh, if I just had money, you'll, you'll never serve the Lord in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean, okay? Uh, you, you know, you'll be vacationing somewhere, and Jesus will have last place, if any place at all, truth be told. Moving on. But the rich, in it, they're made low because as the flower of the grass, he's going to fade away. Uh, for the sun no sooner is risen uh, with the burning heat, and it withers the grass and the flower falls, and the grace of the fashion of everything, you know, and it perishes. So also is the rich man; he fades away in his own ways. Why? Because they're never they're never going to trust the Lord. Uh, so blessed is the person when it says man. Look it up; it means men and women. Uh, and there's no other gender. There's man and there's woman and you can just trust that. Uh, bless, and if you need to know how you can tell, write me, okay? Uh, blessed is the man that endures temptation. These things that Satan is going to throw, that we endure, that we're like, Lord, and it's not that we, you know, it says count it all joy, you know, it's really hard to get to that thing knowing, you know, of what, of what James is talking about here, but when these things come, patience patience because what god wants to do is show himself to us he our dads you know 
they just, you know, the moms are, oh, I this, and we got to do, I don't know what about this that comes in, you know, and those are all very valid things, you know, for our souls, but the dad doesn't care about that, the dad's just like, get out of the way, you know, move out, move, I'm going to get to take care of this problem here, our Heavenly Father wants to show us that he can take care of these problems that are going on in and around us. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is, is then tested, tempted, he's going to receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. And, of course, we all say we love him, but we'll leave it at that. So let none of us say when we are tempted. And, by the way, this is, you know, in the next, i got to hurry. This this is a puzzle that that when we when we put it together in the natural, it's a Picasso. Okay, this is a picture that that turns out to be a Picasso when we paint it. But when when we let the Lord paint it, we'll see this. So hopefully, Father in Jesus' name, Lord help me to explain this correctly or in a way that we can all get it. So let none of us say when we when we are tempted, when we are enticed to sin, so to speak, uh, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So how do we how do we how do we bring the correlation of verse 13 uh with uh with verse two, you know, uh is it no verse yeah verse two, you know, count it all joy when we fall into these different temptations because it's God who's allowing these things in our lives. Now, they're coming in through the devil. Okay, I mentioned this earlier. But God is actually allowing it. He's not creating it. He just knows we're open to it. In fact, that's going to come here real real quick. So he says, uh, he says, let every man say when we're tempted that, that I am, let him not say tempted of God because God can't tempt with evil, neither tempt with the any man. Because every one of us, when we're enticed to sin, we are drawn away by ourselves. We're drawn away of our own lusts. It doesn't have to be sexual. This is this where covetousness uh, comes, is where idolatry, witchcraft comes into our lives. You know, so we're then drawn away by this. We're, 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 oh, look at this. Look at that. Believe this. Believe that. Follow this person. Follow that person. Listen, brothers and sisters, listen. The things that are taught here, I, I forgive me. And, and pr I know there's no pride here that I'm aware of, you know, but the things that Pastor Worley taught work. These things that other people are doing do not. Okay. Before we go recommending other people, before we say, oh, well, this person's in deliverance, only in writing, okay? You, you've heard the rhino, you know, Republican in name only. Well, you know, that's what these people are in, in deliverance, but they're just in name only, okay? You look behind what's going on in these people's groups, you know, and there's control, there's witchcraft, there's manipulation, there's error, there's false doctrine, and God is not in that. It doesn't matter what kind of name you put on yourself. Oh, look at me. I put a I put a, ooh, a holy name on myself, which makes me holy. It does not. You're deceived. You may be a wonderful person, but you're deceived. Brothers and sisters, please, please be careful of who you tell other people, check this person out. Because you may be leading somebody into error and false doctrine, then you've got their blood on your hands, and you'll answer to the Lord for that. That's what the Word of God teaches. It says, let every one of us say we're tempted, blah, 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 verse 14. Let every one of us that is enticed to sin, let us know that we're drawn away of our own lust, we're enticed. Then when lust has conceived, Okay, the Lord, the dig, the demons, the devil just works on us. Think about this. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. Hey, you're not going to get help here. There's, oh, if you go over here, if you go over there, you know, oh, look, oh, look, 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 look at all, you know, the, these are, and ladies, you know, we guys have our own dingle dangles, you know, but, but these, these are things that we're enticed with, you know, bling, bling. I, I use bling. I, I catch fish with it, but, you know, there's bling. There's things that, that, grab us 
you know, and the devil knows our weakness. The devil knows the things. He knows us a lot better than we know ourselves. Uh, and so he brings these things into our lives. And so he says, when our when this desire comes, it comes and it, it it conceives itself, it births itself, and it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's done, it kills our Christianity. It, it's exactly what Chambers was talking about. I mean, the Lord just steps aside when we don't have the first fruits when we're not dealing we can't get the second fruits and the third fruits and all these other fruits that the lord has for us until we deal with the first fruits well what are the first fruits so it brings forth uh, sin and that then births death in our lives and we we're not going to die physically for the no 99.9% .9 of the time but we're going to feel like we are so do not err, my beloved brethren. Do not go into error and false doctrine. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from God, the Father of life, with whom is no variable, no shadow of turning. Because of his own will, begot he us with the word of truth. In his foreknowledge, God knew that we were going to get saved. So he says that that's why we're not our own, as the word of God teaches. We're bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. Of his own will, he begat us with the word of truth so that you and I, here it comes, so that you and I would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, a new beginning. And what is the first part of our salvation? Why does salvation, why do we want salvation? Like, well, because I'm going to hell. Yes, maybe. But that's secondary. Well, because I just can't do it, my life is just falling apart and I, and I need a savior. Yes, yes, we all do. And that's secondary. But why do we get saved? Because we are sinners. And sin is the eternal issue that needs to be dealt with in our lives. The sin of doubt and unbelief, the, the sin, I mean, all these sins, there, you know, we all know there how many millions of them there are out there that leaves us open to demons, that leaves us open to influence from other people. In our lives, we need to put a lid on our garbage can. Listen, grow where you are planted. You know, if you find a place where, you, where things are working for you, and I mean, answers are you know again you may not have everything you want but you know you, you've got a witness and in a, if you don't have a witness about about the teachings here and it's okay i'm i'm not listen i don't give a rat's left foot you know you have your walk and i have mine i'm doing the best i can to present the word of god as straight as possible no variance no fluff no we're gonna build this and we're gonna do this and god's got this thing for you over here. I don't know any of that stuff. All I know is that if we don't deal with the demons in our life today, we're going to have a bad day. That's it. And we can deal with them. Get to behind me. Listen, the simplicity that's in Christ, breaking curses, breaking ungodly soul ties, watching our relationships, not making ungodly agreements with people, not taking other people. You know, you know, Proverbs, tells us that that when we when we meddle with the affairs of other people when, when we insert ourselves into other people's problems it's like grabbing a dog by the ears and yanking now i've never done that and i don't plan to do it but if you want to test that for me i'll stand off to the side i'll bring a i'll bring a nice puppy a big big dog to you and i'll let you grab those ears and let's let's just see what that dog does well no because God knew we were going to get saved of his own will in his foreknowledge, okay, so that we would be a kind of first fruits uh, of his creatures. This, this first fruits is us recognizing sin. This is 
the, the first fruit, because we want love, joy, peace, love, and these are these are paramount for us. These are so important for us. But we've got to deal with the sin issue in our lives. Period. There, there's nothing else. Sin is opening us up to demons. Sin is 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 ruining relationships with us. Sin is driving us to error and false doctrine. Sin is putting us uh, in other people's camps that the Lord doesn't want us in. With sin active in our lives. Love, joy, um, uh, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion freezes in our lives. It's just the way it is. It's that simple. We've got to deal with sin. We've got to find out. And, and scripture is pretty easy. In fact, and I don't have time. You know, you know, you know James, be doers of the word. A great saying, isn't it? You know, the, these cliches that that Christian D-U-M-B, Christian dumb, you know, has embraced, you know? How's Jesus in your life today? How's all those lusts and things that, that listen, you say, well, how do you know? Well, because I got them. I, listen, I'm no different than you are. But the Lord, and I'm not perfect, brothers and sisters, and I have way too many, you know, I, 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 there's no easy road. But there's a straight road, and the road works when these things come in, casting down imaginations and every high thing that's exalting itself to, against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Having in a readiness, verse 7, this is 2 Corinthians 10, uh, yeah, 10, uh, uh, verse 6, you know, casting down imagine, having in a readiness to avenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. Sin produces disobedience in our lives. It, it's, it's what Chambers was talking about. You know, oh, I wasn't taught this way, or, you know, we'll never, now that we're born again, we will never have any excuse standing before the Lord. The Lord's going to say, well, I showed you here. I brought this into your life, but you wanted something else. Because we don't have any patience in our lives. Come on. We don't have any patience in our lives. That's why we don't hear from the Lord because we want everything now. God wants to build us, strengthen us, encourage us. And he does that through this fruit, part of this fruit, patience, which comes through us recognizing our sin. We need to deal with our sin. We're going to continue to talk about fruit. Now, this is the first fruit. Okay. Now, there are other first fruits. There are other things that go with this. But the first thing, we get saved because we recognize we have sin. Now, we're saved from sin in the spirit, but the flesh still craves it. Again, we can ask God when we get home, why would you leave us in the flesh? Well, why didn't you just save us and take us home? Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't, <laughs> come on. Now, I know everybody, everybody's going to be in agreement. But the Lord, obviously, because of the rest of the lost world, after he left us in the flesh. And what did Jesus say in that? Awesome. I'm going to close uh, with uh, John 17. You know, Jesus praying for us. Lord, you know, keep them in the keep them in the flesh, but protect them from evil is what Jesus said. Father, in Jesus' name, that's what we want today, Father. Protect us from evil. Protect us from the evil one. And Lord, sometimes that evil's inside of us. Help us. Father, protect us from ourselves. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand all the things that you have for us today, Father. We ask this in Jesus' name, and I know everybody's saying amen and amen. So make sure you know this Jesus I've been talking about. He's so easy to get to know. He's such a gentleman. Ladies, you should just, when you find a gentleman, you should just run as fast as you can to, to find a guy that cares only about what's best for you. And he knows what's best for you. And, and fellas, if you want to meet a real guy, you know, you want a real man, meet Jesus Christ. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you from your sins. If you'll do that, you know what he'll do? He'll come in because he's a man of his word and he'll save you and he'll start changing from the inside. It's not, it, he can instantly do whatever he wants and he does. You know, and then there are other things that we have to tough our way through, get deliverance for, repent of go through things, but as we do, we grow and we become stronger in faith, in spiritual things. Don't let these carnal things, we are just filled, we're, we're just Christian billy goats. 
butting, but, 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 but. You know, that's, that's what we're doing so much. But if you're driven, harassed, and tormented, this is producing a compulsive behavior in your life, slowing down, stopping, or turning around your spiritual growth and progress. Demons. That's what demons are doing in the life of the believer. Listen, all these other guys, Vlad and Isaiah and, and uh, Ramirez and, and uh, oh, I forgot. Just, yeah, <clears throat> I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Error, false doctrine. Hook on to Jesus. Don't worry about anything else. So get these demons cast out to the best of your ability. In Jesus' name and Lord willing, I'll see you here, there, or in the air.